So I have the RGB set to static white. So why is an LED doing green over there? Oh man, it just crashed. I need to apply this code. What is all this creepy stuff I have to do? Man, that hurts the eye. Just, just shut it down. Man, it is crashing again. It is crashing. So, a couple weeks ago, I bought a new motherboard, the ASRock B450 Steel Legend, and it is genuinely a bang for the buck. And I thoroughly enjoyed the dope unboxing as well as building in it. But after booting into Windows and installing Polychrome Sync software, its RGB control software, I was really disappointed. I tried checking the internet for reviews, what other people have to say, and I was surprised to see no reviews of this software. No one even felt about covering it? Is it really that bad? And for the first time in my life, I checked the second page of Google search results. And my friends had lied to me. There are no monsters there. On the contrary, I found a review of the software there. But it was in some other language and I couldn't understand anything. That is the reason I'm here to Today, Azrock, you got to do something about that software. Let me walk you through it. So on the first look, you will find a rather distinguished software. The interface isn't loud and I like it. But the first thing that will catch your eye is the lack of a restore button. RGB control software with a small UI? Is something fishy? When ASRock launched the Polychrome Sync software, they had put together a small trailer showcasing all the effects over on YouTube. And just look at the dislike ratio. People are all over complaining about it and trolling it. Something is wrong, right? Let us look at some other RGB control software and compare them to this one. ASRock's Polychrome Sync software comes with support for Razer's Chroma software. Let's have a look at that. After we switch on Chroma Connect from Polychrome Sync, we can control the RGB from Razer Chroma software. And for some weird reason, it switches on on the left side. Well, we will set up Music Sync in both the software and we'll show you how much Polychrome Sync sucks. Alright, so inside Chroma software, we have set up Music Sync for Royal Blue for low audio levels, Turquoise for mid audio levels and Full Blown Blood Red for high audio levels. Also, we set the boost to auto which determines how fast a color will fade in and we set the decay to the lowest, 0.1 for how fast a color will fade out. Let's vibe to On and On by Cartoon now. NCS, but I love that song. Till I get up Time is barely on our side I don't wanna waste what's left Ah, I love that song. Anyways, coming back, let us set up a sync in Polychrome software now. You will feel the difference. Let us turn off Chroma Connect in an inverted way and Welcome to Polychrome Sync. And let us choose music from the very scant available FX. And all of a sudden, we cannot sync RGB on the RAM sticks. That sucks. So we will have to leave the RGB on the RAM sticks doing a dumb rainbow or whatever FX the software has. Okay, I think the moving flash works the best with just a bit of red and no green and blue. It kind of gives a small red light finding its way through the RAM modules. Okay, now back to the music sync. You will find yourself amidst a very childish interface with a limited color choice scheme. And it is is just a single color with no gradient or sync based on audio levels. Basic AF. Anyways, let us use this basic color choice rim square to choose a green color because that works best with red. Alright, enjoy the song if you don't enjoy the sync. Till I get up Time is barely on our side I don't wanna waste what's left Okay, I know that sucked. Even the LEDs weren't doing a peak brightness. Time for a second test and just look at how much humiliation Polychrome RGB Sync will have to face now. It's time for Corsair IQ now. And although I have only a single LED to control here, the level of customization will blow you away. Okay, so what do we have here? Temperature control. And it can be synced with all available sensors in the system. Man, this is dope. Also, I love this color shift. It shifts colors with key press and key release. But check the dope best thing this radiant lighting under custom you can specify the lighting duration and then specify which colors to display every hundred millisecond crazy here i set up a green to yellow to red sync and we press a button it begins we release it it stops dope now let us come back to polychrome sync sadly 
You cannot set up a gradient in this software. It is that silly. This thing just got some silly effects. And that number gets halved if you want to sync all of your components apart from the LEDs on your motherboard. And strikingly, the water and neon effects aren't any different. Why put two names then? Plus even the rainbow effect isn't in sync. I mean, it's okay, but look at it. It looks like a complete mess. And believe me, the random cycling and strobe effects are the worst to look at. Plus almost zero customization on these things. Add to that, random crashes. It crashes just like that. And then you have to use WriteFW or reinstall it. Even the drivers and software are an embarrassment. And that's not the end. The software gets rarely updated. You can find a two year old version of it and you will be surprised to find that it is almost similar. People over the internet have reported system crashes as well as PC freezing because of this stupid software. Glad I haven't faced a similar fate and honestly I don't want to either. People even had to put their RGB fan back in the box because of this stupid software. Azrock? You guys are human beings or not? Generally I don't make negative reviews but this software is suffering for all Azrock users. I have seen a guy who switched to MSI from Azrock because of this bad software. Guys you are losing loyal customers because of this trash. It is high time that Azrock makes good software and replaces it with polychrome sync. Just look at MSI. Dragon software was infamous for being buggy and it was ridiculed. So they shifted to MSI Center which is a very polished bit of software. It has already rolled out for numerous boards and in no time MSI will shift to that software completely. So what stops ASRock? They make some of the best value for money boards out there and their OC formula motherboards are one of the best for overclocking. The name pretty much explains it and I personally have seen 5 GHz plus memory clocks on this motherboard. I liked IQ's dope customization the most to be honest. It was just one LED on the Qatar Pro mouse otherwise it would have been an RGB mayhem. And talking about the Qatar Pro I still still can't forget how Corsair screwed it up. If you want to check it out, click on the video here. I've talked about this mouse. Don't forget to like the video and I hope to see you again in the next video.